Don't pay any attention to that time. I don't know. It might be right now. Yesterday I was saying it's right now. Yeah, it's right now. Yeah, we're talking about that. Last night it was saying ten o'clock. It was six o'clock. Mm. What time? Right. time is always right with test on the air. Ain't that right, y'all? <laughs> All right. Can they see my cap hat? Yeah, they can see your cap hat. I'm gonna put it close to them. Make sure they can see it. Mm. Are you there? Yeah. That bald head is a wig. No, it's not. <laughs> it's not. I have plenty of hair, but I just like to go for it. Uh, okay. I hear you, bro. Yeah. All right. Share it on my page. All right, all right. Facebook friends, we're ready to get it started in about three minutes. The song you hear out there is. <laughs> Her name is Dr. Carol Henderson, and she's the vice provost of uh, in charge of diversity at the University of Delaware. And the host is that Dr. Lawrence, Dr. Kalechi Lawrence. And I'll be on for one or two. I was wondering, maybe we could play some African music. After uh, your show, just to kind of get folks okay warmed up. Okay. And what's it, the name of the, the show? That it's, was on it's called the Voices of the Delaware Africa Coalition. Voices of the Delaware Africa Coalition. And it just featured information about various countries in Africa. Okay. Hey, I'm gonna let you get back here. It's okay. It's uh Urban Acres Produce. Um, yeah, they got fresh over oh, across the street. Vegetables. Across the street. Mm -hmm. I like it. It's really nice. Okay, Pat. Um, the uh, the 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 African music is on one of my CD player. Okay. I just have to kind of warn people up. The Delaware African Voices. It's the Voices of the Delaware, Delaware Africa, Africa Coalition. Africa. I don't know why they didn't call it African, but they called it the Delaware Africa Coalition. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. I'm gonna get out of your way. Yeah, all right. All right. So I'll I'll send you a list, Mister Stikari. Okay? okay, and you just let me know. I'll take it off. I'm just listening to you. I know. Oh, what's the what's the host name again, man? Doctor Kalechi, K E L E C H R Kalechi. Lawrence, Dr. Kalechi Lawrence, and he's the president of the Delaware Africa Coalition. Okay. Africa Coalition. All right. We are on Facebook Live. You're getting some information from the um, station uh, manager and director. We're going to get it started. I'm going to start the theme we're song. We're on time? We're on time. Oh, awesome. thank you, Mr. Carey. Yeah, we are He's time. doing wonderful for you. He's here from here at 10 o'clock. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We got to say thank you. Yeah. Um, He's here, boy. Here we go. Something. Stop it. So it's so cute. So cute. Gotcha. 
everybody all tuned up. Uh, we just love you all. Good morning, my children of the sun. Welcome to the open up. We got a hot show for you today. I always say that, don't I? I always mean it too. That's right. <laughs> yes, indeed. And for those of you that don't get us in your area, we are Facebook Live. You know, turn that camera on. So I'm look at yourself. Yes, I can see myself. <laughs> That's right. Because I'm Put on it air, all on baby. you. Good. I'm on the air, baby. That's right. Well, we got, uh, like I said, we always got some hot things going. I always tell you to tune in to WHDE 95.3 FM. I am your host and third eye optometrist. Right now on the air with me is Ms. Lorraine Ballard, our health and nutrition advocate. And Good she morning. Is getting her thing together because she got some high information for you as usual. We yes, will be sir. joined shortly by my partner in consciousness, Mr. Neil Saroma, who of course will have some some real high information for you. And uh, oh, I gotta let you know. Oh, the open eye is brought to you by the Delaware Center for Homeless Vets, the founders and builders of. The Pearl Center, the veteran specific building for veterans. All right. Uh, today at one, following the open eye, well, an hour after we get off the air, will be the voices of the Delaware Africa Africa Coalition, hosted by Dr. Kalachi Lawrence. His guest today will be Dr. Carol Henderson, who is the Vice Provost. Uh, oh, I forgot what section she is um, uh, at the University of Delaware. I think it's Urban Affairs um, that she's the vice provost of. At any rate, she is a very high-ranking individual at the University of Delaware. Also, I want to let you know that right here on Knife and Pine, we have we passed by this morning the Urban Acres Produce Stand, a community-owned farm. They have fresh produce, fruits, vegetables, and what have you. They are there from 10 to 2. That's going to be every Saturday this summer. Please stop by. Please stop by and, uh, you know, support them. Because yes. they, you know, they're providing fresh fruit. And often in the urban community, that's something we don't get. We're in uh, what I call a produce desert. Yes. Yeah. Corn, squash, right. cucumbers. Uh, green peppers. She had some really. They have some really nice uh, vegetables and fruit and apples. Mm -hmm. Oh yes, mm -hmm. stuff that I love. I heard that. Mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. Definitely stop by here and support them. Uh, okay. Um, last week was. Oh well. First, let me start here. There are several states, including Pennsylvania, that will be actually making Juneteenth. A holiday, okay, a state holiday. Last week we had the Juneteenth parade and festival here in Wilmington. Now, for those of you that don't know about Juneteenth, I'm going to give you a little history. Juneteenth is the oldest nationally celebrated commemoration of the ending of slavery in the United States, dating back to 1865. It was on June 19th that the Union soldiers, led by Major General Gordon Granger, landed at Galveston, Texas, with news that the war had ended and that the enslaved were now free. Note that this was two and a half years after President Lincoln's Emancipation Proclamation, which had become official January 1st, 
1863. The Emancipation Proclamation had little impact on Texans due to the minimal number of Union troops to enforce the new executive order. However, with the surrender of General Lee in April 1865 and the arrival of General Granger's regiment, the forces were strong, were finally strong enough to influence and overcome the resistance. Okay. Now, I'll tell you a little about the Emancipation Proclamation. It actually only freed uh, slaves in states that succeeded from the Union. I, I'm sure that Texas was one. They resisted you know, uh, letting go of their slaves, obviously, because the slaves weren't uh, you know, liberated until two years after the Emancipation Proclamation. Okay, now, like I said, this week, uh, last Saturday, excuse me, last Saturday, we had the Juneteenth parade and celebration here in Wilmington. And uh, it was a parade and it was also a festival here. And when uh, that took place, one of the young people that was celebrated was the winner of the Miss Juneteenth pageant, who I had the pleasure of interviewing. I'm gonna play that interview for you right now. This is my interview with Miss Sanaya Gay, the winner of the Miss Juneteenth pageant, 16 year old brilliant young lady. Thank you. 
Nice all right, all right. That was Miss Anaya Gay, Miss yes. Juneteenth, and very, very bright good. young lady. Mm -hmm. I tell you, she really um, is one of those young people that really, you know, make make your heart feel good. Man. You know, that's such a, a bright, ambitious young lady. And you heard what she said; she is going to be a forensic scientist, like, as well as a dancer, talent academically and just just bursting with talent you know mm -hmm. a beautiful young lady and i want to thank her for sitting still for that interview with this old man <laughs> that was nice in you. yes indeed. thank you thank she's you. focused yes she is yes she is this is the open eye <laughs> Oh, I'm looking at your stuff already, trying to get a head start. Reading. <laughs> this good stuff you got. Oh yeah, this is good stuff. Well, yeah. we're gonna be here until about twelve thirty. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, I, I never um, I always bring more than one. There's uh, nothing yeah. wrong with that. There's no yeah. material side. Yeah, yeah. yeah <laughs> Preparation. Sure, uh, you know, always. Be prepared. You know, one of the things that, and Billy always talk about this. I know you out there, Bill. One of the things that Billy always mentions is when the first thing you learn in the military no excuses. I know, they don't want to hear it. And no, they don't want to hear it. No excuses. No. Uh, well, no. I, uh. Nah, nah, they're not trying to hear it. Get down. The, you oh. know, not not Air Force. Well, no, well, you know. You know <laughs> Air Force don't do anything like that. The no, Army, no, they just say, get down. You know? Uh, get right. down, give me 20. Yeah. One of the things that comes to mind after listening to the interview with Ms. Sanaya Gay is how our students and young people are prepared for life. You know, it's 2019. Maybe we need to get rid of algebra two in high school and replace it with financial fundamentals. 
teach kids about careers, not just college, salaries, credit budgeting, taking out a, a loan, investing, uh, college debt, buying a house, following taxes. You know, I know some young people because most of the time we use um, our debit cards and what have you. I know young people that do not know how to write a check. That's crazy. That is crazy. I think I knew that in the ninth grade, maybe before then. Yeah. You knew a lot of things. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, writing checks. <laughs> Which is kind of good, but just a little too early. Here you are. So, all right. All right. <laughs> Ain't nobody ask you all that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, very well. Yeah, you know, it might be true. Yeah. yeah I, I do see that. Well. Yeah. At any rate, back to the uh, open eye and get some information out to the people. Uh, of course, Delaware's purported alleged favorite son, and Joe Biden, is running for president. And as usual, Mr. Biden, what do you do? He put his foot in his mouth. He must taste it. Like, love to taste the shoe leather. He got up and said some mess about, well, he dealt with, you know, um, uh, politicians from the South, congressmen and senators and what have you, who were still fighting for segregation and who were obvious racists, but they never called him boy. They might have called him son, but they never called Excuse me, Joe, but you're a white man. You know, they didn't do that with white men. They might call you son. You know, but they did not, you know, pull up and hey boy, you know, in the uh, uh, disparaging manner that they did with black people. I can remember, oh, this was in 2000, one of our state reps, the disrespect that uh, she received as a black woman and right here in the state capitol was just, just appalling. You know, first of all, they wouldn't call her by her last name. They called her by her name as if she was, you know, someone working in the kitchen. Ms. So and so, I'm not going to call her name. Ms. So and so. And some of these, you know, Confederate minded fools, you know, even a couple of times got away with patting her on her head, you know, and uh, man, that, that's just appalling. Now, when Joe Biden made these statements and what have you. A lot of people found him distasteful and rightfully so. But what do we have? As usual, you're, you can find a Negro pin that's going to come to some Southern racist fool's defense. And yeah, we're a Southern state. And yeah, um, I am comparing Joe Biden with some of these people, especially considering his record. South Carolina uh, Congressman Jen Clyburn defended by his boy comments and accused Nancy Pelosi, Nancy Pelosi, who criticized Joe Biden for his comments, of tokenism. Now, Representative James Clyburn, uh, he's been in, in the House, in, uh, my God, from South Carolina for some 40, 40 years or whatever. He's been there too damn long. You know, he's an old school Negro PM whose views are outdated. And South Carolina, I hope you wake up and vote this old Negro PM out of office because his time should have been done. I mean, oh he was goodness. one of the first uh, when the, the issue has currently cropped up about reparations. He was one of the first to come out and say, well, we don't need no reparation. You know, I got some choice words for you, Mr. Clyde Byrne. Okay. Yeah, I got some choice words for you. I'm not going to call you out on the air with some of the words. Negro pen is strong enough. Everybody get it. They know what I mean. But I, you know what? Here's the thing. I'm going I'm to I'm throw this in there for you, Mr. Clyburn. You know, you're, you're, you're like one of those chickens voting for Colonel Sanders. These chickens vote for Colonel Sanders, and then when you flower your ass up, and that grease start popping, and you start clucking. Can't put the feathers back on the chicken once you done pluck that ass. Fire that grease up. Okay, let's sit here. Ooh, you should have warned me. Gee, Monique, that, that sounds like some pent up. <laughs> Something going oh, on up in that thing. I can't stand. Right now, we're on Facebook Lord Live. Lord have mercy. Did you hear all this? 
Did you hear him? He is fired up. I wish he would have warned me. I had to step out of the camera. Like, I'm like, that sounds like some pent up something inside of that tank. Jim Clyburn. Oh, my. Here, I'm going to let you take this. Come on, go stay there. You would be Oh, yeah, Jim Clyburn. I said, these chicken voting for Colonel Sanders. Then when you fly your ass up and that grease start popping, you start clucking. You can't put the feathers back on the chicken once you've been cooked that ass. Five degrees are fried. I thought you said you wasn't going to say the A word. Which one, is Which one is legal? Which one is legal? Hey, where is legal? It's legal. Hey, where is gay? Uh, wow. what else? Oh, we're on the air. That's, 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 that's a little different. No, and they had to see, they're going to see us <laughs> in public. Yeah, they're going to see us in public. I ain't the only one with them. What? Yeah. Uh, uh, uh. And so, whoa. Oh, yeah. He, 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 anger yeah. issues in that tank. Yeah, he always had bigger issues than yeah. afterwards. You know, you know, that's what. Uh, Did you see Amistad? Amistad. Amistad. You ever see that? At the movie? Yeah, about Joseph Sinku. Oh, okay. um, what year did that come out originally? No, 85. It, that was the first time I was cut on hey, the hey, hey, hey. The open eye is back on the air. I know that was kind of hard on Jim <laughs> Clyburn from South Carolina, but he had it coming. Yeah, he had it coming. Hey, hey, we got some people on Facebook Live. Uh, Sherry Bryson, of course, my man Vaughn. Hi, Sherry and Vaughn. Eustra Gomez. Good day, people. And oh, okay. Eustra? Okay. Gomez? Eustra is a good friend of Hello. Ron. Okay. Hey, we love all of our Facebook Live friends. Yes, the our family. Right. Roger Carey's on there. Glad to have you. Yeah, buddy. And, um, he made it. A good friend of Ron. He's referring to the late great Ron Sutton. Um, soprano, soprano? No, no, no. Uh, alto sax player extraordinaire is a great friend of mine. And well, back back to the issues. Would be um, I'm expecting a calling interview from who am I Debbie expecting? Matthews, from my Debbie sister. Matthews, you know, okay, He's a very close friend of our nutrition health advocate, uh, Ms. Ballard, mm -hmm. and she will be calling in to talk about the mental health workshop coming up. And I look forward to her call in a few minutes. But in the meantime, back to some issues that I think they're mentioning. Now, uh, you know, sometimes these these white supremacists and these racists they they just just get out of hand, get out of hand. You know, a teacher was fired after telling elementary school students. Yes. Yes. You hear about Let that? Let me pull up. Yeah, pull up on that. Pull up on that. You're lucky. I'm not making you take cotton. All right, go Are ahead. You I'm sorry. No, you I, right. I just couldn't believe I heard my ears, and it's not cute. No. And it's not funny. It's very, very disrespectful. Very. You know, a working school teacher, and, you know, rightfully so, she was fired. They should have fired her mm -hmm. after making this racist remark to an 11, 11 year old biracial student. Now, and let, me, let me put on the brakes right there. For some of my Biracial friends understand that we live in America where they have the one drop rule. You can run around and call yourself biracial all day and all you want to. The dominant society looks at you as black. You have one drop of black blood, and that's not what they call you. Don't get it mixed. That is not what they call you. Well, anyway, Jasmine Spencer was sitting with friends eating lunch at Linwood Elementary School in Milwaukee, Oregon, when the teacher berated her with hateful remarks for their behavior. The teacher was like, you're lucky I'm not making you pick cotton and clean my house and stuff like that. You know, and the poor student, little 11-year-old girl, said it made her feel really sad and targeted. Now, why did she pick her out? Like I said, you know, that one black girl, and of course her, her mother was absolutely outraged with, with 
you know, these, these teachers' remarks, and the school board addressed the situation with this statement. We know and understand that the impact of words spoken could be hurtful for our students, and that was the case in this situation. We deeply regret this impact and will continue to work with our students and school community to make sure they are heard and feel supported. Well, big ups to um, the school board and wherever it was in Oregon, which, you know, shows Oregon has come a long way because there's a very small black population in Oregon because Oregon had a, had a history of one, sundown towns, and two, doing all they could to run black people out of Oregon. They did not want black people in Oregon. <laughs> no Saroma. Yeah. yeah. Yo, why, yo why, man, it, but it's a shame. Mm -hmm. It's really a shame how, you know, racism is still alive and striving. It's yeah. not it's not really diminishing. No. And and it's a shame over all these years that, you know, um uh, a person can hold so much hate for a person that didn't even do anything. Yeah, them. just based on their on their on their skin color. And then that that's that's like really puzzling to me. What type of brain ha has to carry that envy, mm -hmm. hate mm -hmm. for centuries and centuries and yeah. pass it down? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. What what type of brain are we dealing with here? We are dealing with uh, uh, mentally ill. Uh, you know, generational generations of mentally ill people who actually have been, mm, how can you say, what's the word I'm looking for here? Do a little bit of a blank, but they have been conditioned. You know, I was going to say, learned and taught. Yeah. In psychology, taught. We, we were told that that was learned mm -hmm. behavior, taught behavior. Mm -hmm. You think you don't have influence? Mm -hmm. you, do. you do. Because where did that teacher get that from? Yeah. That was totally unnecessary. And in the but program. now if we, flip, if we flip the cards mm -hmm. and say something negative mm -hmm. about you, then you're wrong. Mm -hmm. See, we don't understand that it hurts until the cards are played on right. us. Right. So I thought you was talking about that little boy that the teacher came in and said, good morning, class. And he started using profanity. Mm, mm, mm. This and, was an old black boy? Uh, <laughs> 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 Obviously not. Okay. Like, <laughs> my, my parents didn't even have to wait for a report like that. Mm -hmm. Out of their presence, we knew how to behave. Right. That wasn't even a question no, of a report we getting were, back to our parents like that. Mm -hmm. We were taught. We were actually taught before you left the house, mm -hmm. what you better do when you go outside. Oh, yeah. If oh, you yeah. go in the store, you better not touch nothing. You know what I mean? Right. Like, yeah. It was a different genre of parents also, a parent. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I think that played a big part, too, because, you know, the music and TV and all these other influences that, you know, brainwashes our people mm -hmm. has yeah. really been, you know, doing the job. Yes, it has, you know, because like like you both were saying, you know, we learned what not to do. See, we were afraid for one thing, you know, our generation grew up in the village. You know, right. And we were afraid that if we were out and away from our parents and some other adult saw us cutting up or using that foul language. Us. Yeah, you know, hey, we, you, we would be in trouble because, you know, I often say about um, one of my neighbors, Miss Johnson, her, her house, you know, she had nine nine children and all the kids played at her house and what have you. Now, Ms., Ms., when Miss Johnson was handing out whippings, if you was there, you got a whooping. That's right, yeah. <laughs> and that's, that's the way we, that's the way we kept our kids. <laughs> That's the way we kept our kids and our families together because it was one big family in the community, not just nowadays. You hit my kid, no. you put your hand on my daughter. Yeah, yeah right. but she was in there getting ready, right. start a fire and burn his house down. Yeah, yeah. You, and, know. And, you know, and you, you want to beat me up because I'm I'm stopping you. Are you kidding? And and that's the way it is. They flipped it now. You yeah, know what I'm saying? That's right. Because like you said, you know, and it was uh, the, the other side of that, like you were saying. You know, if you cut up to somebody else, somebody's house, you got to whip it for it right there from that. Pen. Right. 
and you hope that's where it ended, right? Because they didn't tell. Jail. Yeah, because you'll get another one. Yeah, that's right. In front of your friends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Most definitely. Oh yeah. Oh, my mom had a movie. Wherever you showed out, that's where she bust you. Oh, that's where you get it. Oh yeah. <laughs> you want to show out? Oh, oh, she will bust you out right on check. That's for sure. This Listen. Okay, so good. Go ahead, go ahead, okay, go ahead. Well, we, we have a, a guest on the line. Very special guest. Yes. We, oh, wait a minute. I gotta make sure I have the right line here. Is it this one? I think it is. I hope it is. Uh, hello. Miss Matthews? Oh, no, that's what I said. Yeah. Miss Matthews? Oh, there she is. Hi. Hey, how you doing, Miss Matthews? You can cut her out. Okay. Miss Matthews? What happened to her? The other end, I thought. Oh, the girl was this? Yeah. Okay. Miss Matthews? Oh, okay. Now we can hear you too. Okay. Welcome to the open eye. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for this opportunity. You are so welcome. Good morning. Mm -hmm. Good morning. We share it with. Uh, the listeners last week that we will be introducing you or having you come on and just share uh, about uh, how Kingdom Connectors got started and go from there. But just give us just a moment, okay? Okay, no problem. Okay, we're good. All we're right. She's on here. Okay, so mm -hmm. we're, we're set now. We just we just went through our little child exactly. upbringing and different things, kind of like <laughs> I'm fired with that. So go ahead, right. Mr. Gibbs. Okay. Uh, like Ms. Ballard said, my name is Pat Gibbs. I am the host at Open Eye, and welcome to the show. Thank you. Uh, okay, we had discussed what an important issue that is going uh, that is being addressed in the upcoming workshop. Could you tell us about the workshop? Yes. First of all, I want to take this time, first of all, to... Um, Thank you again, Mr. Gibbs, for this open door opportunity. Yeah, you're welcome. How this workshop came about, um, two years ago at my church in Newcastle, Delaware, uh, it, which is in the work by the Fellowship Church with the pastors of Dr. David Mills and Pastor Bernadette Mills, they so graciously had the speaker to come in and talk about mental illness. They're very, they're, they're pastors that's very innovative. They're very up on what's going on in the community and what's going on in the world. And they want to empower their people. They want to educate their people on how they can live better, fulfilling, healthy lives. And she came in and she did this presentation and the title of it was called Suffering in Silence. Mm -hmm. And this speaker, Miss Murphy, she is a licensed clinical therapist, and she's an RN. And she began to talk about uh, different scenarios of the different clients that she dealt with. But she hit a topic that hit, hit the core of my being, and that was seasonal depression. And she began to describe what seasonal depression was. And for me, I'll just relate it to me. Back in 2002, I had a traumatic experience happen in my life where my god sister, Dolores Meadows, died of breast cancer. Mm -hmm. And it was a sudden death. And after her death, because she died right on Thanksgiving mm -hmm. day in 2002. So after her death, I didn't understand or realize why I was so sad around the Thanksgiving holiday for years, for many years, mm -hmm. until I went to that workshop in 2016, I believe it was 2016 or 2017, that my church hosted it. And she said, Miss Murray began to talk about when you can experience seasonal depression. And I didn't know that I was dealing with depression because in the African-American community, you are, you know, we all are aware of, we don't talk about those things. And especially if we're in the church, we go to the word of God, we believe God, but there's practical things that we are dealing with that he wants to enlighten us with so that we can become holistic, whole mentally, not only spiritually, but our entire being being whole. So that workshop 
set me free in so many areas. So I'm grateful to my pastors for bringing her in to speak. So I was at a service over in Jersey, my home church over in Jersey, and I see so many individuals suffering in silence. And that came to me, have the workshop here, because it's a lot of people, not only in the church, but in our communities, suffering, going through traumatic life experiences. They don't, need, they don't know what it is, or they don't even know how to talk about it without being felt as though they're wrong or they're not trusting God or something is wrong with them. When actually it's not anything wrong with them, they're just crying out for help and they just need to connect with the right resource that can help them. Mm -hmm. So that's how that came about. Okay. Well, um, one of the things that you mentioned with mental health issues in our community, uh, is the reluctance to seek treatment. And, yes. and that goes, like you said, it goes beyond the church. It goes deep into our community. Uh, yes. One of the things that I had mentioned when we had discussed this, uh, I think it was last week, is dealing with forces in the community, such as law enforcement. Yes. Um, when I've seen several cases where you know someone was mentally ill, Oh, and they weren't taking their medication. And because they weren't taking their medication, of course, they reacted. They were not on their meds. And sometimes these reactions can be violent and frightening, especially to, you know, to their family. And calling the police is the worst thing in the world, it turns out, that, that you can do when you're dealing with an issue like that. Especially, especially, especially when they're black. Especially when you're black. That's my co-host, Mr. Roman. Hello, lady. How are you? Hi. How are you, sir? Good. <laughs> okay. Um, well, like you said, this uh, workshop is coming up, and it is Saturday, July 20th. Yes, sir. Okay. And we will keep uh, keep announcing that you know this is coming up. Which, what do you? What's the qualifications you need to have to be in a, a program? Yeah. What do you have to do to attend the workshop? Just come. Just come. That's great. That's it's open to the public. It's a, it's this, this church has been so gracious. It's not a church event. It's my organization's event. Um, and it's in honor of my God sister who passed away in 2002 because she was a licensed clinical social worker. 19 years ago, she was bringing this type of educational awareness to the faith-based community. And I'm just carrying on her legacy. All right. And we're at, Debbie, let them know. Oh, it's going to be at Nothing But The Word Deliverance Church. And the address is 2017 Route 130 South, Florence, New Jersey, 08518. And Florence, New Jersey is only like an hour away from here. Because you can, so many ways you can go, you can go either 95, take 95, go north. All, uh, or you can take 295 on north, get off the exit 55, B, and it brings you right into Florence. Okay, I'd like to um, confirm that address. Was it 2017 or 2071 Route 30? 2071. Okay, 2071 Route 30 South, uh, Florence, New Jersey. And the speaker will be? Priscilla Murphy. Okay. All right. Listen, I really want to thank you for taking this time, and we will keep announcing, um, you know, your workshop. And uh, is there anything else you want to say, Lorraine? No. Yes, sir. Oh, oh I'm sorry. Go no, go, go ahead, Debbie. Go ahead. What I wanted to say is address the situation with the police. Mm -hmm. I know that right now, because of situations like that that has occurred, I remember one that occurred, I think it was a couple of years ago, in the city of Wilmington. Uh, where a young man was unfortunately having some mental health challenges and I, I think he was murdered. And the community was very upset about that. So I, I, I understand now that the police is going through a lot of sensitivity training mm -hmm. when it deals with mental health issues because it is needed. And what we have to also remember too is our police officers deal with their own issues. Yeah, yes they do. 
you know. The, because that's a very stressful job. Mm -hmm. And they see a lot of trauma, they deal with a lot of traumatic things. And unfortunately, uh, they now are in, you know, it's being offered to them things that can help them be mentally healthy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think I have a comment from my co-host, Mr. Roman. No, I was just uh, saying we're all going through a mental challenge. Yes. You understand? Yes. Yes. And the people of the world is the most important. Mm -hmm. If you're getting hired for a job, you perform your job first. And after you get off work, you go to the hospital. Mm -hmm. That's the way yes. some employees feel. Yes. You feel what I'm saying? If yes. you're working on a line and you're supposed to be here like Chrysler and GM, mm -hmm. you, you can't just leave when you want because you're interrupting a whole gang of right. people you're and that's stop production, production. Right. right so <clears throat> we as the people need to step up and you know be more uh cognizant of how we talk to police officers so, so we yes. don't we don't put them through or don't cut that switch on you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. sometimes you have to de-escalate the situation yes. you know and and we already they already come at us on at people of color mm -hmm. on ah, yeah, rah, 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 rah. Right. you see what i'm saying yeah. so and you have to this is right you have to you have to miles per hour. exactly you have mm -hmm. to slow down that Right. And say, listen, I'm only doing 30 right here. So why are you doing 100? Yeah. You see what I'm saying? And, and first of all, we have to communicate better with the police yes. officers. So we have to learn how to talk to right. other people. Mm -hmm. and, and the uniform isn't really a factor because if you talk to me crazy, I don't care if I'm on a job or mm -hmm. off the job. Mm -hmm. I'm going to let you know how I feel. And that can escalate right. into something. Yeah. Now, and that, and that that is so interesting that we have to as African Americans deal with situations where you know we're not trained to stand there with a gun in our face. You know, and we have to de-escalate a situation with the police that the police should be trained to de-escalate. Right. It's their job to de-escalate it, right. not mine. Right. Uh, they're getting paid to de-escalate it, not come in and kill me. The yeah. first thing you do, if you see a black man, you want to pull the gun and not the taser. Right. But you're trained to pull the taser with a white guy. Yeah. But with a gun with a black guy, you're trained to pull the gun first. Right. That's Especially, that's not equal opportunity training to no, me. No, no, it's not. Especially when you're dealing with someone that is mentally ill. Yes. So, so mm -hmm. Debbie, on this topic here, it specifically states suffering and silence. So, the, I think when she gave that class that you remember, that session, a lot of things are repressed. And I know when I worked in the medical field for 16 years, they always had some type of sessions, classes, a lot of different things going on where if you needed that help, you can get the help. So that, that's a very good, that's going to be a really, really good informational day there. That's good. Yes. Okay. July 20th. July 20th, 2019, from 10.30 a.m. to 12.30 p.m., nothing but the word, Deliverance Church, 2071, Route 130 South, uh, Route 130 South, Florence, New Jersey. And, yes. Um, Ms. Matthews, we'd really like to thank you for joining us on The Open Eye. And I hope that our listeners are now uh, cognizant of what's going to be taking place at your, at your workshop. And they will gladly join you there. Thank you. Thank you so much. And thank you again for this open door opportunity, sir. You're welcome. Thank you. All right. This is The Open Eye. You're welcome. The open eye, yes. Open eye eyes. That was good, too. That sounded good. Hey, hey, thanks a lot. We're off the air now. Okay, I think Lorraine would like to say thank you. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. So, love, love you, enjoy your day, okay? And we'll keep.
by providing housing for you, and taking the cycle of homelessness for a dollar, and supplying them with supportive services that they themselves identify as needed to combat future homelessness. We are able to fully support their long-term goals of housing. Go over time and watch it. Of course, you're going to say that. Yeah. Uh, and you got another problem with that. Not one thing. Okay. 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 That's how I am. Mean. I mean, people over there, and I hope y'all enjoy that on uh, Facebook Live over there. Yeah, so, <laughs> you know, I'm <laughs> yeah, well, Anderson joined us. Oh, I told people I was called out their last name. Oh, okay, Robert. <laughs> yes, man. But they got the whole name on Facebook, but you wouldn't know the whole name. <laughs> but don't they have to? Uh, well, yeah, yeah. I mean, y'all, y'all ain't lying like from nobody. Hey, watch out now. <laughs> okay. All right. I hope you're ready with your pH levels. Did you look that up? So post that. <laughs> WHGE 95.3 FM versus the open eye. Later on today, of course, will be a Johnson Sports Zone at 4 o'clock, which will be followed by the weekend review with Mr. Alan Lawrence. Okay, and of course, daily, every day, Black History Facts and Reflections, hosted by our illustrious leader, Mr. Harmon Carey. And this is the open eye. And guess what? It's time to get ready. Time to get ready. What we get ready for here? Wait a minute. Let me find the music. I got it. Uh oh. Uh oh. Yeah, take me a minute sometimes. There. It's there. Oh, we know it's there. Where's it at? Oh, uh, all right. Hang in there, y'all. I got you. Yeah, I got you. All right. Here we go. Yeah. You're supposed to have hand claps and everything. <laughs> I gotta bring that machine back. <laughs> <laughs> the name of that song is Early Summer, yes, by yours truly. I love it. And when you hear that song, you know it's time to go down the organic path with Lorraine. Miss Villar. Hello, Pat and Nosa Roma. Hey, Yada, Yada. Okay, so we talked about last week. This is part two, and we said it in three different languages or four. Uh, I think it was Agua, Vasa, uh, Volta, Volta, Water. Water. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, that was a water, little bit of German and Dutch and Spanish, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, but I have like just a little second portion of this, and I wanted to specifically talk about a major internal organ and the importance of water, because I don't want to keep saying, just drink water. Mm -hmm. No, I need to really explain just a little bit why it's so important to drink water. Mm -hmm. So I want to go over this subject, can dehydration affect your kidneys? Mm -hmm. Okay, now this information, I found some of it on the National Kidney Foundation. So you're not just hearing it from Lorraine. Now, one person I want to give a shout out to that is not afraid to drink water, and that's Mr. Pat Gibbs. Yes, ma'am. Now, when we did the smoking section, mm -hmm. I had to point to my right every single yeah. weekend, mm -hmm. every single week. But this one, I must say, Mr. Gibbs, make sure he drinks his water. Yes, please. I'm so proud. Thank you, ma'am. So, but what is the kidney? Why is that such a major internal organ? Mm. And let me tell you some of the things um, that you hear, uh, hopefully you'll grab or get a better appreciation of, okay, maybe I better go to the store and get uh, cases of water. Mm. So kidney is two bean-shaped 
organs, and they're like the size of a fist. Okay. They are located underneath your ribs. Okay. Okay. Mm. So what is the main function of the kidney? Or some people know it as uh, renal. Mm. Okay. Our kidney is a filter to ensure adequate quantity of plasma to keep blood flowing to vital organs, mm. excretion of waste, toxins, regulation of pH, filters blood before sending it back to the heart production of hormones. So ion, key ions include sodium and potassium. Osmolarity brings balance of sodium input and output, okay, with okay. water. So uh, I wanted to really talk about a little bit of dehydration because before we talked about heat stroke, sunstroke. Mm -hmm. So I really want to express because we've had a lot of days where the humidity factor, the humidity index is extremely high. Mm -hmm. And it is real. You can pass out. Mm -hmm. Okay. So remember I said I wanted to talk about preventing that. Mm -hmm. So that's why I'm stuck on the same subject. Uh, uh, so dehydration is a significant loss of body fluid that impairs normal body functions, a dangerously overheated body. And remember what degree temperature that was, 104. 104. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Remember, great. Mm -hmm. So dehydration has multiple effects on the kidney, leading to urinary concentration, urinary uh, tract infections, mm -hmm. um, kidney stones, that less easily when you have enough water. Mm -hmm. So stones does form when you don't drink enough water. Mm -hmm. And I don't know who experienced kidney stones, but when they don't pass through, individuals are not themselves at all. I bet not. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So you got to get those toxins out mm -hmm. water. So in summary of this, so dehydration happens if you use if we use and lose more water from the body takes in mm -hmm. so our kidney has water mm -hmm. a little bit stored in our kidney that particular organ mm -hmm. it actually comes it actually helps when there's no water but it's only so much that the kidney can do mm -hmm. and you do not want the kidney to shut down so in other words what this is saying if you are not putting enough water in your body mm -hmm. and the water is being taken from the kidney that's not good mm -hmm. that's only, exactly mm -hmm. and i'm getting ahead of myself because when i was looking this over it took some time hours to go through this but mm -hmm. so this is not now this part is not a scare tactic but i do want to share this piece right here mm -hmm. what happens if your kidney suddenly fails and it does not take long to shut down mm -hmm. okay so that's called acute kidney failure when your kidneys suddenly become unable to filter waste waste mm -hmm. products from your blood when your kidneys lose their filtering ability dangerous levels of waste may accumulate and your blood chemicals makeup may get out of balance mm -hmm. so it does not take long for the kidneys to shut down we're not talking about days and days and days in order to go into acute kidney failure mm -hmm. so i promise that so anyway drink up please drink water i promise to have an answer for you about ph level now i want to say again i hope they're listening to dave and roger and Mr. Carey, who allows us to give this information. And last week I did not answer because some things with the body, it's some things are not just one answer because mm. it varies. That's why it's called pH levels. Okay. There are levels. So pH means potential hydrogen. Mm. Now I can say, and it is safe to say that seven is the neutral number. I know that much, okay. but I wanted to go over just a little bit about pH level since our raptivist brought this up and blame him partially for what <laughs> I have to share since he wants to know this information. 
Uh, pH levels, so our bodies work constantly to carefully control levels of blood and other fluids. That's why the pH level is so important. So we have an acid base and an alkaline base. Mm -hmm. So we must have balance and the right balance is mm -hmm. needed for good health. Okay. So the scale ranges from 0 to 14, 7 being neutral. Mm -hmm. But a healthy ratio to maintain is considered 70-30. Mm -hmm. Alkaline acid. Okay. Okay, 70-30 ratio. Mm -hmm. um, and the reason why this is so important because most diseases and illnesses and bad bacteria thrive in an over acidic environment. So a good pH level is seven, which I mentioned before, that's neutral. Levels vary throughout your body. Your blood slightly, your blood is slightly alkaline with pH between 7.35 and 7.45, okay? Mm -hmm. So now for your stomach, it's very acidic, mm -hmm. okay? With pH levels of 3.5 or below in order to break down food. Okay. So we need that. So how can I bring balance to my pH mm -hmm. levels naturally? So I'm gonna, just gonna give you just eight ways real quick. So one, go alkaline for 30 days to refresh and recharge. So you could do that by an alkaline diet, which means eat more fruits and vegetables, such as cucumbers, celery, spinach, mm -hmm. the dark green. Mm -hmm. That's high alkaline, especially mm -hmm. spinach, um, broccoli and some more things you can eat as well but eat green reduce acidic foods limit alcohol consumption you uh -oh. know that <laughs> yeah okay yeah. you hear that rap to this yes for yes. the ph level mm -hmm. you want to keep that in control and balance limit your alcohol assumption drink alkaline water which mm -hmm. is very good i have the privilege of having access to alkaline water uh, choose natural energy boost drinks, break a sweat, work out, mm. and seek balance. Oh. Now, you can test your pH level, but the one thing that you want to keep in mind is check it on the same, at the same time and every day mm -hmm. uh, during the same time. You got to be consistent with that. The goal is to get your morning pH between 6.5 and 7.5. Levels vary. This is just the base, but I recommend checking with your, your doctor because okay. our bodies are different. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you might check your level, but if you just drink cranberry juice, mm -hmm. you know, you're going to be a, probably a little bit more acidic. Okay. So that's why I said just check with your doctor if that's a concern. All right. Okay. All right. Thank yeah, you. And your organic cat with Lorraine is brought to you by Organic Supplements LLC. Mylakaya. That's M Y W A K A Y A dot com. That was the organic cat on the open eye with Lorraine. <laughs> Oh, I had to mention about the urine. Your urine is yellow or blue. And you are smelling it mm -hmm. from Sunday to Friday. <laughs> <laughs> you got a problem. And if you are having secretions mm -hmm. and discharges and it's smelling, mm -hmm. you might. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, you got a problem. Some, some water. I heard that. That's right. Hey, you got some for us? Ah, well, yeah, I'm on my mom's too. I was just making this. Oh, my God. Oh, oh you didn't tell him my baby. Yeah, it, it is 12 o'clock. Um, I know, that's right. Yeah. All right, I'm going to make this She one. said we can stay as long as we want. Well, man, of course, she's going to stay. Why would it be? Look at this thing in the world for that. <laughs>
That's what I did earlier to say to me now before I got here. Of course, one of the issues that was hot this week was the issue of reparations. We're running out of time, and we're going to hit, hit you real strong it's about reparations right. coming up in uh, our, our next broadcast. Uh, okay. And of course, um, oh, I got to mention this. Oh, where was it? Where was it? Oh, I got it right here. Had this uh, nut in uh, Walmart claiming, pretending he's a cop. Oh, yeah, yeah, pretending he was a cop. A woman accused of stealing some tampons, so he shot her and killed her. Yeah. No, you yeah. hold on. Uh -uh. Yeah, he is incarcerated right now. Oh well, no. Oh I'm mad. No, I'm they, mad now. You just said no, I'm mad now. I'm they, mad. They, they haven't locked him up yet. I'm mad. No, they haven't locked him up yet. Uh, they're negotiating with his lawyer. What the hell? How do you negotiate a murder? You explain that to me. I'm saying, okay, I'm going to explain it to you. It's white justice. Right. That's, white how you, that's right. White privilege and white justice. They're mm -hmm. running in the same line. Yep. So first we have to attack this justice system. You know right. what I'm saying? I yep. mean, it's really designed for... For white people, not people of color. Right. I'm, I'm really seeing that yeah. as I get older in my age. Yes, sir. That it is, brother. Money, you don't even, money doesn't make a difference in it for no. black people no. in the justice system. You know, some people with some money got their wake up call. I say they call the case of Negro Beatties. I'm telling you that. You know, that's you crazy. was good because you had a couple of dollars. You know, well, guess what? Well, you did. You, you heard what Jay Z said about OJ. Yeah. OJ said, <laughs> I, I, I'm not black I'm OJ. Oh, OJ, yeah. It's still <laughs> oh word, Mr. OJ. <laughs> you know, let me tell you something. Global white supremacy has a plan. You know, every time a cop is acquitted for the murder of, black, of a black person, black people cry, the system is broken. Stop it. The system is not broken. It's working exactly as it was intended to work. The system was not created to give us justice. The system was created to subjugate black people. Every time an innocent black person is murdered by the cops, black people cry, it's the training. Stop it. They're doing exactly what they were trained to do. Right. That training is the go. That's okay. Right. We need you to get four black people this year. I don't care how you do it. You understand? Yeah. Kill them, murder them, lock them up. I don't, I don't care. Run them over in the car. You just make this happen. We make need this happen. to happen. Yeah. Because when you go to the firing range as a cop, your target is black people on the firing range. And we talked about that before. Yeah, and that was that. I think that should be the most um, thought about and sought out thing to change in the police force. Mm -hmm. uh, you go and you see a bunch of little black kids as targets for them right. to shoot at mm -hmm. compared to, and you know, white targets. Right. That's embedded in this self-conscious. And that's why they pull the gun instead of a taser mm -hmm. for the black people. That's right. And yeah, it's, it's the train. That's messy, man. Right. They they got the taser. Why is all these people dying from gunshots? Yeah. And I, I'm, that, because, like we said, that's embedded. It's the training. How many times have we seen white suspects who actually committed a crime taken into custody without incident as opposed to innocent, innocent black people who are unarmed and have not even committed a crime and are constantly murdered? Right. What about the, the lady that had the little toddler steal the doll? I mean, yeah. she ain't even really steal a doll. She's two years old. She don't know what stealing yeah. is, period. Yeah. So she can't she even tell you I'm stealing or not. Mm -hmm. But still and still. Mm -hmm. It was only a 99 cent dial. You right. got 50 cops running down on a woman and a little baby. Right. Mm -hmm. like, 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 you know, like they made a major bank robbery. Like it was the Brinks Armor Car mm -hmm. robbery. Right. Something. Like they heard they were going to go shoot up a church. Yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? Right. Mm -hmm. Jay-Z ended up uh, hiring a lawyer for her. You know that, right? Oh, yeah. 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 And, uh, they, they, they trying to get... Uh, 10 million. Yeah. yeah. There's, there's no money that can take that away out of your brain. No. A hundred no. cops coming at you. No, because you know you what? Shoot you. Two of her children are now living, tra are, are now traumatized. Right. And they can't even be it. Right. Go ahead. Anytime you see it, anytime you see a, a police officer or, or a police officer or a person in uniform, mm -hmm. you have a phobia. Yeah. 
That's I right. mean, I have a phobia too. I'm, I'm, I have a phobia for because, the police right now because we're under attack. That's right. And you have to realize that. You mm -hmm. have to be aware of when you're under attack mm -hmm. so you won't respond in them situations where you can be supposedly tasered. And, oh, I forgot. It's on yes. this side. I'm, I'm shouting by mistake. Yeah. No. Because uh, the worst thing in the world that you can see as a black person is to look in your rear view mirror and see uh, police car lights uh, bearing down on you. Right, and I was riding with my boy, right? Mm -hmm. He's a white guy. Mm -hmm. And it, you know, we'll go, we riding down the streets, the police pull behind black people, they, black people automatically go, yo, the police behind you. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, and right. I said that to him. Mm -hmm. I said, yo, yo, the, the police behind you, chill out, you know, relax, don't even be driving all while or whatever. Mm -hmm. He's like, oh man, they don't do nothing to me. <laughs> I'm like, what? Yeah, that's he white like, privilege. He, right. He like, I don't care about the yeah, police. Yeah, yeah. He, I, yeah. I'm like, we what? Don't have that I mean, but to see it and mm -hmm. then then be part of it mm -hmm. and then watch the police go by and wave at the guy. Mm -hmm. and, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. And then keep on matching when, mm -hmm. when I know it was just speeding mm -hmm. in the 25 doing 50. Mm -hmm. yeah. It didn't yeah. say nothing to him, man. That's right. That's white that. privilege, brother. You know what? We are all prayed up. They don't give a damn about ineffective marches. We don't need another protest. We need to begin the process of changing the social structure. This is now a, this is now about destroying a system that refuses to recognize our humanity and right to exist. It's no longer about freedom and liberty. This is about survival. If you don't understand global white supremacy, everything else will just confuse you. Global white supremacy has a plan for black people. Global white supremacy plans to enslave black people mentally, physically, spiritually. Global white supremacy plans to exploit black people. Global white supremacy plans to abuse and terrorize black people. Global white supremacy plans to kill black people. This is called genocidal activity. Genocidal activity is intentionally attempting to, be, to, to deprive the natural right of a people to exist as a race. When are black people going to realize global white supremacy has long ago declared war on our very existence? It's no longer just about freedom and liberty. This is about survival. And right. And when you're dealing with that survival, right? Mm -hmm. Now, you got the government. Mm -hmm. The government paid, mm -hmm. paid mm -hmm. slave owners mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to because the slaves left. They right. paid them. Yeah, they paid okay? them. That was called reparations. They paid they them $300 them. each slave, and they had like hundreds. Yeah. You now remember, 300, this is $300 1865 right. money. Right. Okay. Back in the day, that's a lot of money yeah. back in the day. Yeah. They was working in cents back in the day. Mm -hmm. So if you got $300 a person, per slave, you were you had a large plantation. Right. That alone made you a millionaire. Right. Now, outside of all of that, when mm -hmm. you go, okay, how is this designed and how is this set up? Mm -hmm. When they let the slaves go mm -hmm. and they said, all right, y'all free to go. Mm -hmm. And everybody was free, they roaming and all of that. Mm -hmm. And they put a new law in. They mm -hmm. said, okay, if you're free, um, this is what we're going to do. We're going to start a laudering law. Right. And if you get vacancy. caught laudering, vacancy, mm -hmm. yes. you don't have nowhere to go, mm -hmm. we lock you up. Right. Now, how you how you get locked up for laudering for 40 years? Yeah, you know. They was given time like that oh, yeah. for standing outside. Mm -hmm. They pull up on you and they, they, were, they, they make up these laws as they go to keep black people or people of color and Latinos, Spanish, right. anybody that's and not white. Right. And the system of the prison system, because that's the new slave system where they can the rent you slaves. out. They can rent you out right. to... to uh, a plantation I, where you were where you were once a slave. Not Be even a slave a, again. Not even a plantation. It's it's right now. A, they call it business now. Oh, yeah. It's a oh. business name now. Oh. So they rent you out the Amazon. Oh yeah, right. And put, and put you outside Amazon and clean up their yard. Oh, even worse than that. Put you on a highway. Now check this out. They will put you in. Uh, oh, you mentioned Amazon. They will put you in some of these tech companies where you will be assembling computers. Right. And where you could not get a job when you were on the street. Or when you get out of there and yeah. you know the training, okay, mm -hmm. say you only locked up for a year or two or whatever. Mm -hmm. You're doing your time. You pay society your debt. Now, that's supposed to be forgotten. You're supposed to be a new citizen to be able to start mm -hmm. off and get a new life mm -hmm. because you've paid your debt. Right. They don't let blacks pay their debt or no. con con 
perceive that their debt is paid off. No. And they just constantly attack you. Once you're in the system, mm -hmm. it's it's over, yes. really. Yes. You know what because I'm saying? Once once you're like you said, once you're in the system, especially you know, if it's a felony charge, then you're a felon for the rest of your life. And some of these things never come off the books. You can, now here in Delaware, they have done some things, uh -huh. you know, uh, with these laws where you know, there are certain things that you weren't able to do. Of course, in most most states, you still, if you have a felony charge, you're still not allowed to vote. And you can't vote, you're not a citizen. And because that's what they ask, that's yeah. what they did for all the black people to not be able to vote. Right. They'll pull you over and stop you and give you a, a felony mm -hmm. for a ticket. Because mm -hmm. you're, okay, say you get locked up, you ain't got no money, you go to jail. Mm -hmm. And then when you're in jail, you got to survive because there's people in jail that's doing, they put you in this, a, a cell with a person that has murdered 19 people right. and they don't care. Right. They're looking at a life sentence, triple life sentence. Mm -hmm. So they don't care about nothing. Right. Okay. Yeah, and then when they, they put do. you in the cell mm -hmm. and with them, mm -hmm. you have to fight for your life. So when, the, when they come in and you end up killing this guy or putting this guy in the hospital, that's another charge right. while you're in jail. Mm -hmm. So you won't get out of jail the 90 days that you're supposed to get out mm -hmm. because you had a fight mm -hmm. and that fight turned into a three year sentence, sentence right. in jail mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. they put you next to people that it's don't care 22. about the law right it's, it's a 22. setup it's a system exactly. setup That's exactly and if we're not I, it needs to be mm -hmm. we can, need to do I, something about I, it. I can't say this enough they have Seal Team Sixes that go get people that's messed up. Mm -hmm. You know, they got all these uh, government trained people that, you know, got alphabet letter titles. Mm -hmm. It needs to be some type of organization for black people that creates these alphabet titles to go get these uh, injustice doers, man. Yeah, that's exactly what we need, but. See, the thing is, we... Pick a sign and march, and it's not going to You know, here's what's crazy. We're not afraid of going to jail, because we do it. We're obviously not. I am. I don't know about anybody else, but no, but as, as black men, you know, we don't have a real fear of that. No, did you see, not to cut you off, but mm -hmm. did you see 13th? No, I still haven't seen that. I got to you know, get it some for stuff you. I, you know, I have a hard time. Listen, I recommend I every person that is of color to watch this movie yeah. go on the internet youtube i don't care it's mm -hmm. called 13th yeah i know about, and, this, about the 13th amendment yes yeah and 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 they'll show you step by step how from when uh what's his name nixon mm -hmm. nixon started started the drug war nixon started the drug war the drug war to go after black people it right was here. only it's all designed for black people right. period and mm -hmm. if you watch this you'll really get good insight mm -hmm. on what's going on in front of us right now right. because it's still unfolding mm -hmm. and the, the the orange disaster oh yeah he's putting all of them presidents together in this one presidency mm -hmm. trying to bring make america great again mm -hmm. by doing the things that they were doing back then right. to capture the black people. Right. And right. the Southern strategy, yo, is serious. Yeah. Oh, it's yeah. messy. And, 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 oh, yeah. When I say messy, dog, mm -hmm. it's messy. Right. You know, like I said, you know, now over the past two weeks, what I talked about was power. I'm probably going to lose some friends on this, but I really don't give a damn. As I'm much more interested in power than I am in popularity. Yes, I mean black power. The power we need not only to survive, but to thrive. The power we need to battle the genocidal goals of white supremacy. I don't give a damn about forming some phony ass one-sided alliance with people who only want to cry brotherhood when it's convenient for them. If alliances with others are not instrumental in the advancement and liberty of black people, miss me with that crap. <laughs> black first. Y'all got me. Open eye, 95.3 FM, WHTE radio. You dig? Oh, One day I'm going to go outside, they're going to be just waiting, like lined up. <laughs> Are you? <laughs> no, no, no that's, that's my twin brother. That's, I'm Vincent. <laughs> I'm Vincent. <laughs> you want to drink that? <laughs> Let me get inspirational on the movie out of here. <laughs>
This is the open eye. You know, those who died yesterday had plans for this morning. And those who died this morning had plans for tonight. Don't take life for granted. In the blink of an eye, everything can change. So forgive often and love with all your heart. You may never have that chance again. I want to thank Ashley Randolph for that. As I always say, destiny determines who enters your life, but you decide who stays. Therefore, value those who value you and don't treat those as a priority to treat you as an option. This is the open eye. 95.3 FM, WHTA. Um, Patrice Gibbs, no Saroma in the building. The rain with the organic path. Yeah. Drink water. Drink water. Drink water. All right, all right. Facebook friends, we are out. Hope you enjoyed the show today. Thanks for joining us. Look, don't be afraid to call in next time. And let her know the shirts will be in the first. Okay. And we got to have a shirt. Right. to you by the third or something. All right. right. You have your shirt in time. You go to the uh, amusement park for the 4th of July. Oh, okay. Yeah, <laughs> tell them most definitely. <laughs> yeah. All right, now. Peace from the open line.